Hey everybody, I'm Ryan Stroud with PC Perspective. We are here with Raja Kadori from AMD Radeon Technologies Group. We just finished up with a uh, presentation. We, we're going to call it a press conference, but people told me not to call it a press conference because there were so many developers in attendance. What do you think about kind of the reception you've had so far? Oh, it's uh, extraordinary. Actually, the reaction from developers, the press, the analysts, and some of our partners has been really, 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 really good. Uh, they see the work we're doing with VR, uh, the work we're doing with DX12 and the games, and they're all very, very pleased. And uh, uh, and what's amazing is we are only at the beginning of this year, and uh, we have a full pipeline of uh, products, both hardware and software, uh, you know, coming coming your way. I mean, I, I will agree that it looks like the rest of 2016 seems more interesting, probably hardware-wise, at least release-wise, uh, than what we've seen thus far. But there is still one really interesting product that you guys finally announced today, the long-awaited kind of the dual GPU Fiji card. I, I will think I, I'm going to guess a lot of our our viewers and readers. I'm going to be surprised in the, at the way it came out, right? It's the Radeon Pro Duo. It's a brand we've never heard of before. It's not a Fury product. I kept calling it the Fury X2. I think you guys changed the name just so I wasn't right. Uh, but what, is, what, what was the mindset behind releasing it as a card somewhere in, in between Radeon and Fire Pro? Sure, sure. Yeah, no, th th there is a, a, a lot of uh, kind of planning and thinking that went into it. Uh, but, you know, we've been uh, thinking about this, that we are at an inflection point on APIs and all, and uh, DX12 coming, Vulkan coming and all, that uh, we felt that, you know, this is the time to get past Crossfire. If you see, like, we have done Crossfire, where we abstracted uh, the multi-GPU and made it kind of appear as a single GPU. But with modern APIs, we are at an inflection point, and we felt it needs a new product, okay? And then we started looking at, what are the interesting use cases? What are the interesting problems we can solve? And we found this space between the enthusiast and the creator be very, very interesting. You know, the gamers who create and the, crea the creators who game. And, uh, and, and we wanted to target the developers first because for, to make multi-GPU successful, multi-GPU useful in the next 12 months, 24 months, the developer community has to be uh, uh, investing uh, into the new APIs and, and leveraging that, okay? And we want to assure that feature. We will continue to support Crossfire and all, but as you all know, right, I mean, they are, uh, they are very interesting scale factors you get sometimes and, and, and also issues you get uh, with, the, with the thing. So we are taking an approach here saying, now, okay, it is all of our, uh, all of our problem get the developers on it, get them engaged, get them interested. And one other thing we're doing as a strategic thing, which we have never done before, is the partnership with uh, Crytek, where we are going to seed Radeon Pro Duo cards and CryEngine to universities and through the VR First program. So we are getting multi-GPU into the grassroots. Right? And, and that's because you're saying that like DirectX 12, Vulkan, it fundamentally changes how multi-GPU works, right? Yeah. And so, the, the pathways that AMD and NVIDIA have had on multi-GP before don't really translate over? Uh, exactly, right? With, uh, with DirectX 12 and Vulkan, the, the control of uh, how to schedule the both GPUs and what you want to do with them is with the developer, right? Uh, whereas we, we hit, it, hit it in the drivers, not always successfully, as you all know, right? You know, some, many titles work, some titles didn't, uh, and, uh, you know, it was a, a problem for the consumer. Uh, you know, to do that. The other uh, aspect that we talked about today at the, at the press conference is that, you know, multi-GPU is no longer just an enthusiast play, you know, that, that we do just one bleeding edge card. The way we think about it strategically is that the concept of multi-GPU is going to extend up and down the stack. If you look into the future of what's happening with Moore's Law and performance per dollar and uh, the new, techno new, new technologies, FinFET and beyond, where the small die yield much, much, much better. And uh, the, the economics of the smaller die are, are much better than the bigger die. So uh, we are taking that into consideration to and say, hey, we, by 2017, 2018, 2019, this is the reality, just like multi-core was a reality for the CPU guys, multi-GP is a reality for us. And we better get the software ecosystem going now than wait a few years. That's a good point. Did, now, does VR change anything with that? Like, a lot of people assume, well, VR is easy to do multi-GPU, do one GPU per eye. But it's not really that simple, is it? 
Yeah, no, I mean, you know, VR makes certain things simpler, but the game rendering pipelines are complicated. Like say, for example, shadow maps. There are multiple things that are common for each, uh, common for both eyes that they do. And, uh, you know, that work needs to be, uh, you know, kind of broadcast between the GPUs and all. Uh, so VR makes kind of the base level scaling uh, easier, but uh, there are still many corner cases that need to be taken care of, and it depends on engine architecture to engine architecture. So some of the engines that we put liquid VR in, it was uh, three hours of work. They got up and running and like, you know, 1.8x or 2x scaling. Some other engines, three months later, we are still working. <laughs> right. So that kind of leads into Polaris. You guys showed uh, the P Polaris 11 part at CES. Uh, did kind of a, a, a competitive comparison there, looked at performance per watt. Today you showed Polaris 10. Did no direct comparisons to it, but you showed 25 by 14, Hitman, uh, the new Hitman running DX12 at 60 frames per second. First of all, the new naming scheme is interesting to me, Polaris 11, 10 down the line. Are we going to go down to Polaris 1? What's our limits here? <laughs> You know, there is a, uh, so let's talk the naming scheme first. There is no equation to the name, naming scheme. Uh, you know, uh, uh, it's just, uh, you know, the, the sequence of numbers. I don't think it'll go down, it'll only increase, okay, our, our, our naming scheme. It's just time-based thing. You know, if we, if we build another Polaris architecture-based chip, it'll be bigger than 11. That's the secret I'm going to give away uh, on this thing. Uh, now, in terms of, uh, how we are looking at Polaris 10 and 11, uh, and also you know, kind of competitive comparisons and all, what you'll see us do is completely different with uh, Polaris 10 and 11. We are really focusing on trying to bring the FinFET technology with its amazing performance per watt to uh, many, many segments as possible. Okay, many, many ranges of uh, uh, performance as possible. And uh, we are working through that. And, 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 and I can tell uh, Ryan, you and your readers, you'll be pleased at what we are going to do uh, with that thing. And you'll be surprised uh, at uh, what we're going to do with the, with the positioning of those cards. Is that going to be the, the talk about, hey, multi-GPU being more smaller dies? Is that leading us into higher total performance, kind of like meeting the, like the performance scaling that we're used to? with like single large chips? I mean, you'll, you'll see that too, uh, but I think the more, more important thing to kind of focus on is that there is so much excitement right now around uh, whether it's VR, 4K displays, and, and, and gaming in general, right? But uh, the, the, the requirements to uh, achieve that, uh, you know, that, that experience today are very, very high, okay? And, uh, we want uh, you know, several millions of uh, gamers more to enjoy that experience. So that's our first priority. The next level priority is kind of you know, keep giving the enthusiasts you know, the last millisecond, right? If the last millisecond. So that's the order we are thinking about it. And, uh, and, and, and you'll see, like I said, you know, you'll be very pleased with, with what we do. We are looking at the entire gamut of gamers. You know, how many millions of them are there, what they buy, what, uh, you know, the performance per dollar aspect. How do we make it sweet for them from the performance per dollar aspect? And, and are we going to see, I know we've talked about uh, when, we, when we had our GPU Tech Day back in December in Sonoma, uh, that June was a target, but we, don't, we didn't really talk about like what products win type of thing. Is it basically second half of the year that we'll see all this stuff occur, like the, from the mobile to the desktop? Um, you know, we are trying to ship as soon as we can, <laughs> right? As soon as we can, and uh, the teams are working very, very hard. Uh, and, you know, if I have a date, I'll tell you exactly. The teams are working hard for uh, getting everything, you know, rock solid, production ready and all. And, uh, and they know, you know, they are, uh, uh, they're, they're, they're waiting for it because uh, I, I kind of, you know, had a personal, uh, uh, what you call, a resolution that I'm only going to celebrate uh, when we do product launches. So they know that I'm waiting to have my next drink at, uh, at the Polaris launch. The entire Radeon Technology Group know that I'm, you know, today at Capsaicin, I have a beer in hand, uh, and the next time is when we launch Polaris. So. That's, that's serious commitment, I'll give you. Now, one more thing I'm gonna ask, because we had a lot of questions on Twitter about it, and they'd, our viewers would get pissed if I didn't. You showed a roadmap on stage today. 
And it listed HBM2 in your next generation part. Does that mean HBM2 is not coming to Polaris? Uh, you can connect the dots, Ryan. You're uh, very good at connecting the dots. You want me to connect the dots? You want me I mean, to like spoon feed? Right? <laughs> uh, you know, the, the, uh, the statement I would make is that we pioneered HBM, right? And we laid the, uh, the entire, uh, what you call the pipeline of uh, the suppliers, not just the memory, but also the you know the packaging suppliers and and uh, and all of the stuff, and and it was exciting. Doing new technology is exciting, but it's also quite expensive. Okay, and uh, what we want to do with HPM2 is bring it when 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 it is ready for mainstream, right? When when it's ready uh, for. Uh, you know, a larger range of gamers. And, and that's, that's what you'll see us do uh, with HBM2. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. I'm gonna let you get back to your wings and hot sauces that I will never, ever attempt to try. That is perhaps the best name for a hot sauce I've ever seen. And I, I don't know how much it would take for me to, I'm not, I'm not gonna try that. Uh, thanks guys, we'll see you next time. No, none of that, none of that. Cut the video, cut the video. See you, see you. <laughs>